Welcome, welcome. Okay, if you've been watching a few videos back on the firearms, you'll note I mentioned I had a surprise for you guys coming up. And today, that day has come. It is not this PPQ. It is a high point. But not just any high point. The Yeet Cannon G1. Oh yes. Oh yes. Here she is in all her glory. Now I never thought in a million years I'd ever be excited for a high point. But anybody who knows about the Yeet Cannon is probably just as excited about this thing as I am. This is the Gen 1 Yeet Cannon. Denoted here. Yeet Canon G1. This is the outgoing one. This is the final production run of these C9s to be followed up either late this year, 2019, or early 2020 with the Gen 2 Yeet Cannon, which I do plan on getting one of those also day one for dual wheeled Yeet Cannons. But for now, we just have the Gen 1, so I'll go ahead and show it to you guys. So, if you've ever seen the C9, it's really not that different, with the exception of it saying Yeet Cannon G1. My mom has a C9. Uh, hers does not have colored sights on it, so we get yellow up front and red in the back. Three dot sights, if you will. This is a striker fired gun. With a magazine safety. This is the safety in this position. It is on safe. This is fire. There's no magazine in it. Will not fire. If you cycle it, you can lock the slide back with this same device here. It's your standard rifling in the barrel. do have the magazine loaded, but we won't chamber around. See? No round chambered. So you can fire it once with the magazine in, and then that's it. Much like the PPQ, the Glock, and other striker-fired guns, not the cleanest ejecting magazine, but Fairly positive. It only comes with one magazine, by the way. And it's a single stack, nine, so it holds uh, eight rounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Single stack, nine millimeter. What is this? 1911? Ah, get it? Because, yeah. In 1911, single stack. All right. In any case, so uh, I do like their attention to detail here. This is the chamber. It does say Yeet G1 9mm. That I do like. These grips are removable and replaceable. Now when it comes to disassembly on this thing, I don't... my punch kit, punch sets in the other room with my gun cleaning stuff, so I'm not going to demonstrate it here, but you punch this pen out, I recommend not punching it all the way out because it's holding in that little guy right there. So you pound it out most of the way to where it's protruding mostly through here. It's just in here a little bit. At that point you can pull this slide all the way back, lift up slightly, and then it comes off the front. This barrel is fixed to the frame. The spring and guy rod is right behind this thing. It sits in this little channel right there. Now, for size comparison on these things, if you're wondering how big and mammoth this thing is, because this thing is big, it is mammoth, it is heavy, you could probably use this as a bludgeon to bludgeon somebody with, should it malfunction or you run out of ammo. And yes, bludgeon is both a noun and a verb, so you can use this as a bludgeon to bludgeon someone. True story. 
had the PPQ nearby earlier, so full size gun, double stack nine. I would consider this high point a full size gun as well. Only in single stack nine. So they're about the same width. Let me see how much they weigh here. Uh, believe it or not, this loaded and this loaded feel roughly about the same weight. I don't have a scale. Probably small enough to measure that. I'm not going to go grab the bathroom scale. So the PPQ is a little bit longer. Longer barrel. About the same width. And it is slightly taller. Pair this with the Taurus G2C. I have Katie's on hand. Mine's, I think, in the bedroom somewhere. High Point has a longer barrel, a little bit wider, and a little bit taller. This is in comparison size to the PK380. Much wider. Roughly about the same length. If you count the hammer that's on the PK380, you could you can make the argument that they are the same. Although the hammer is is in the uh, the first cocked position, I always keep mine on the little semi cock because uh, for some reason people have problems with this. They're like, oh, I thought you can like half cock this. You can. It just has to be in the fire position. You put it in the fire position first, and then you can half cock it. Just so you know. I know it has nothing to do with this video, but I'm just throwing that out there for people. So back to this guy. So I'm pretty pumped for this thing. I've had it for a couple weeks now. I, uh, I just haven't gotten around to filming this unboxing, and I have taken out and shot it once already. And uh, I did film that. Unfortunately, my camera lady... Did a not so good job of filming the uh, the intended uh, funness that I had planned for this guy. I'll elaborate on that possibly in the next video. I'll throw that in for the gag reel, I reckon. But here's some of the other stuff this thing comes with. This thing no one's going to use. Some sort of a trigger lock, I guess. Now this was the bag it came in. It does come with a ghost ring sight. You can also use this tool to adjust the sights. Sights are adjustable. In the back, you can raise it for elevation. You can also move it left and right for windage. My receipt. 154. The actual price is like Here is the instruction manual. So no one needs to read this unless you want to go to uh, whatever page that is. It tells you how to disassemble it. Page 12 maybe or something. 20 something. One of these pages actually has the uh, that exploded view of all the parts. So if you're in the middle of disassembling and uh, parts go flying everywhere and you're like, OMG, where does everything go? Where does my, like, 37 parts go? Not to fear. Page 50 is your friend. What is this? I reckon this is the warranty card. 
you activate your uh, warranty online, you can receive 15% off your accessory order to include wood grain handles. Although I'd be more interested in this extended mag myself. Just saying. What's in here? Probably promotional material for high points, I'm assuming. Eight round, ten round, ten round mags. Holsters. I don't think I'm going to get a holster for this thing. I'm probably not really going to carry it. I might use it as a car gun. But uh, what I'm mostly going to plan on using it for is saving it for Gen 2 to come out. And then I can use my uh, dual wield yeet cannon. <laughs> Dollar bills. Nice. Nice. Carbines. 9mm carbine, 380 carbine. I don't know if I was to get a carbine, I'd probably get a high point carbine. Why the hell not? Why not? Well, I do have the Bushmaster rifle, so I don't really see a need for a carbine because if you break into my house and I have access to the Bushmaster, you're getting Bushmastered. You're getting all 42 plus 1 rounds of 556. Five, The NRA. Yes, because they've been doing so much to defend our rights these days. Am I right, guys? Also, you, Walmart. Hang fires and how to avoid them. Shake your ammo. I don't know if that actually works. I've never shook my ammo, but I've also never had a hang fire. I've just had a, a fail to fire for a light primer strike. Warning from Massachusetts. Everything's illegal in Massachusetts is what I'm going to assume that says. Minute, what the hell is this? Youth handguns. Misuse handguns. Leading contributor to juvenile violence and fatalities. I beg to differ. I'd say like bad parenting is probably the uh, number one contributor to juvenile violence and fatalities. All right. Because all you single moms out there raising the future carjackers of America... Uh, when they go to carjack me, they're getting shot in the face. So, just so you know, don't be surprised when that happens, because I warned you. All right, guys, so that, in a nutshell, is the Yeet Cannon G1. I'm actually pretty pumped to have this gun. I was pumped when it came in. I like the little attention to de the detail here. This is, like, laser engraved, I believe. I need to lube that up a little. It hasn't broken in yet. I've only fired uh, 50... No, I've fired less than 100 rounds out of it. 50-something rounds, probably. And you know what? I guess for shits and giggles, I can throw that bean footage in here. So what had happened was I originally planned on using this uh, to quite comedically see if I could fix an electronic device with it. In this case, it happened to be a cell phone telephone. Well, uh, Katie thought that I was going to go like set it up at a distance and fire at it from a distance, so she wasn't wearing a hearing protection. Uh, but what I actually did was just toss it on the ground in front of me, yelled yeet, and then uh, just unloaded into it. But she paused the video for some reason because she didn't have her hearing protection and was like, ah! so loud! So like it didn't even get to record any of that. And I'll insert that clip now welcome welcome and today what we have here is our yeet cannon g1 and this cell phone that's locked see there's a lock so the cell phone's not really working properly because of this lock that's up there at the top left so we're gonna try to fix this i think i can fix this phone I think I can fix it using the yeet cannon. So we're going to put that theory to the test. We're going to see if we can fix this phone with this gun. Yeet, motherfucker! Yes, yeah, so that actually happened. So that's her bad on that. That was her fault. 
I blame her, but not to fear, guys. I am sure I will find something else around here that I can repair, a television or something, perhaps, and I will be able to repair it with the Yeet Cannon. Um, but if you're curious as to what happened to the phone, uh, it was shot multiple times, and it was an unsuccessful repair with the Yeet Cannon, which means one of two things. Either one, the Yeet Cannon is not good at repairing cell phones, but could potentially repair a television, or... We need a different gun to repair electronics instead of the Yeet Cannon. So perhaps next time I should t attempt to repair something, maybe in a different weapon and caliber, like my 686 Plus, Smith & Wesson 357 mag, seven shots. Or perhaps the 1911. Yes, this one's loaded, cocked and locked. So if you need a box of tissues because of that, go grab yourself one. So I don't know. Comment below and let me know what you guys think. Should I attempt to uh, repair another television or something with the Yeet Cannon? Because maybe it just isn't good at repairing cell phones? Or is the Yeet Cannon insufficient at repairing electronics and I should use the 1911? Maybe that'll work. Or the 686 Plus. Let me know what you guys think down below. All right. Thank you for watching my unboxing video of the High Point Yeet Cannon G1. Once G2 comes out, I will get it. and We'll do some shooting videos of that. Dual wield. Also in the future, we're going to do some dual wield uh, G2Cs since I happen to have access to two or more of them. And probably one of these days I might do dual Walther wield, PPQ and P99 dual wield, and maybe PPS and uh, PK380 dual wield. I don't know. We're gonna. I, I got. I got. I got some things in the works, but I've been busy with my car, Camaro getting wrecked lately, and uh, BMW windshield getting broken, and all that other stuff. So I haven't got a chance to get to the range and get some shooting done. But it's coming, guys. It's coming. So Oh, and if I forget, forgot to mention, uh, yes, the Yeet Cannon is capable of firing plus P ammunition. So, if you want to get, you know, maximum Yeet out of your Yeet Cannon, you load that beast up with your uh, plus P 9mm. 124 grain Hornady or 115 grain Winchester, whatever. But yes, Yeet Cannon can fire uh, plus P. I have already test fired it out of this gun maybe I'll include that uh, that bean footage here I don't know I'll probably do that in its own video I think I will so all right thanks for watching guys peace